Thank you for applying to Habitat for Humanity Chicago's Affordable Home Ownership Program. This presentation provides step-by-step -step instructions to complete the application for submission to our program. A complete application for Habitat for Humanity Chicago's Affordable Home Ownership Program includes the application document, legal disclosures and notices, and the required supporting documentation from your records to verify your income, identification, rental history, and other details. Here are some tips for submitting a quality application. Listen to this presentation in full before beginning to fill out your application, and then consider listening to it in sections as you begin to fill out your application so you don't miss anything. You can fill out the application by hand or using a PDF writer like Adobe. We accept both as long as they are legible. If you run out of space in any section, you may add additional pages to your application. Just make sure they are labeled clearly with the section number and to which of the applicants or household members the information applies. If you are not completely sure about a particular section, leave it blank and a Habitat Chicago staff member will assist you during your consultation. Please do your best to fill out the application as much as possible prior to your consultation. Then you'll want to take a few steps to get prepared for the information you need. First, if you have not used up your allowance of three free credit reports this year, access your free credit report at www.annualcreditreport.com. Having this on hand will help you fill in the debt section of the application as well as knowing whether you need specific supporting documentation. Accessing your free credit report does not impact your credit score. Habitat Chicago will also pull your credit report during application processing, but you can expedite your application process by knowing what it shows ahead of time. Second, be ready with a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet or scratch paper to be able to work through some of the sections like the asset, income, and debt and expenses section in the application before transferring your information to the application. Finally, you will be collecting a lot of documents and so you'll need to find a system to stay organized. Consider using folders, paper clips, labels, etc. Whatever works for you to keep everything together. Any original documents you share with Habitat Chicago will be photocopied and the originals returned to you. The application document. Step 1. Now we will go through the application document. You will fill this out as either a single applicant or, a, or with a co-applicant. If you apply with a co-applicant, both of you will be considered jointly responsible for the loan. Both of you will have to fill out all sections within the application document and both of you will have to come to the consultation with the required documents for both of you detailed on the required documents page. We have included in this presentation screenshots of a sample completed application. This example is meant to demonstrate what each section looks like when filled in appropriately. Please use only your own information and if you are unsure at any point, reach out with questions. Now we will go through the application document page by starting with page one. For section one, application information, please fill out all sections and all lines of this page carefully. Please note, dependents are the people who will be living with you in your new home, that you claim on your tax returns and you are financially responsible for. 
you must show at least two years of residential history on this page. Please include any previous addresses within the past two years. Add an additional page if necessary. Now, please turn to page two which includes Section 2, Present Housing Conditions, and Section 3, Property Information. Please fill out all sections and all lines of this page carefully. Section 2 applies to your current housing situation. Please make sure to indicate the number of individuals living in and the square footage of the home you live in. Include your monthly rental amount on this page in the correct section. If you are living in any form of subsidized housing, please check yes to the subsidized housing question. Include the name and address and contact information of your current landlord. If you are living with friends or family and are not on the apartment lease, please list the name and contact information of the family member or friend that you pay rent to for your current accommodations in this section. As part of your supporting documents in the application, you will need to provide documentation of rent payments to this person. If you are currently homeless, please write homeless in this section. Please note that you will be asked to provide one year of rental history within the past three years, as well as the contact information for the person slash company to whom you paid rent. Habitat Chicago reserves the right to verify this information by asking for letters from a social service agency. For the final prompt in this section, please describe your current housing situation, including any structural safety or health issues, if any exist. In section three, completely fill out the requested property information, which ask if you currently own a home or land. Now we will go over section four on page two, which is employment information. Please fill out all sections and all lines of this section carefully. This section applies to the most recent two years of current employment information for you and your co-applicant. Habitat Chicago needs to verify steady employment for the past two years for the application. Fill out all pieces of information for all employment within the past 24 months, starting with the date of this application. Please include part-time employment. Add an additional page if necessary. If you have been self-employed in any capacity in the past two years, please write the name and address of your business and write self-employed in the name slash address box. Please include all information requested for self-employment positions. The gross monthly wages for self-employment, even if estimated, should have business expenses subtracted from the total. Now, please turn to page three of your application. In section five, list all of your monthly income for you your co-applicant, and any member of your future household who receives income. It is important to include your other future household members and to include them separately from your own income because we use all sources of income in different eligibility calculations. Please make sure you list all sources of income you receive and the monthly amount of this income totaled per source. Income includes regular continuous payments received by members of your household. It also includes part-time employment, lift, or other contract work or online store income. If an income source does not apply to you or anyone in your household, you may leave the line blank or write in zeros. As a last step in this section, fill out the table others in household whose income is listed above,
by listing the individuals and the income source for anyone you included in the Others in Household column in the monthly table. If someone has more than one income source, list each income source repeating the name of that household member. In section six on page three, titled Source of Down Payment and Closing Cost, please explain in detail how you will pay for your closing cost. In the case of a Habitat loan, closing cost refers to earnest money that will go towards your closing cost fees, your two months of escrow cushion, and purchasing one year of homeowner's insurance. Closing cost are required at the time of closing and will total approximately $3,500. A sample answer could be, I will withdraw money from my XYZ retirement savings account or I have already saved $2,500 in my XYZ savings account. I plan to add $100 a month to it on going forward. Now please turn to page four of your application. Section seven is where you will list all of your assets. Please fill out all lines in this section carefully. Assets include current savings, retirement, checking, CDs, or any other accounts held by the applicant or co-applicant. You must include the name of the institution, account number, and current balance of each account. We will verify these accounts at the time of your consultation using the official statement from the institution which holds them. In section 8 on page 4, list all of your debts. Fill out lines of this page carefully. This section applies to current debt of the applicant and co-applicant. You must include all debt, which is any money you owe to people or institutions through a court order or money that was borrowed in a loan or credit process. This includes child support, student loans, alimony, and medical debt. For each type of account, total the stated minimum monthly payment due on any account in this category. You may find these minimums on your free credit report or on your billing statements. For example, if you have two credit cards, one carrying a minimum payment of $25 and a second with a minimum payment of $35, you would enter the sum of the two or $60 in the line for total credit. If an account category does not apply to you or your co-applicant, you may leave the line blank or write in zeros. Please add a page if necessary. If you or your co-applicant have any debt accounts that are deferred, please list them in the deferred debt table below the debt table. List the date you anticipate starting or resuming payments on the debt as well as your expected monthly payment requirements. Now please turn to page 5 of your application and fill out all sections and lines of the monthly expenses table carefully. This section applies to the current expenses of the applicant and co-applicant. Expenses are bills for which you pay for services or fees that are recurring on a monthly or weekly basis. You pay the bill for recent services received. It might be helpful to pull up your most two to three months of bank statements to assist you with filling out this section. Comb through each statement and highlight all of the monthly expenses that you pay through any of your bank accounts. This section is not for credit or debt related activities. If you or your co-applicant pay for an expense out of a joint account, use the total column to report the expense line as a household expense. 
If an expense category does not apply to you or your co-applicant, leave the line blank or write in zeros. Please add a page if necessary. For section 9 on page 5, Declarations, please fill out all sections and all lines of this page carefully and remember to read each question before checking yes or no. If you answered yes to any of the questions A through H, please provide a written statement of why you answered yes on a separate piece of paper. We will likely need supporting documentation for these items and will clarify what is needed in your consultation session. Now please turn to page 6 in your application to section 10 titled Authorization and Release. Read this section and confirm that you understand the authorization and release section by signing and dating at the lines indicated with an X. If there is a co-borrower for this application, they must also read and confirm by their signature understanding of this section of the application. Now please turn to page 7 in your application to section 11 titled Information for Government Monitoring Purposes. This page is voluntary to complete. As a lender, Habitat Chicago must collect this information for statistical purposes for the federal government. The page is not stored with the application and no applicant names are attached to this data. The information collected on this form does not have any bearing on the application process and is completely anonymous and confidential. Fill in only the applicant and co-applicant fields. Please do not fill in the section below titled For Office Use Only. Step 2. Collecting your documentation. We just finished explaining how to completely fill out the application form portion of the application. We are now going to discuss the documents you will need to provide for the submission with your application at your consultation. An application is not considered complete until all of the required documentation is received for the applicant, co-applicant, and all household members. Failure to provide this documentation will result in an incomplete application, which cannot be assessed for program eligibility. If, during or after the consultation submission process, we identify missing documentation, an applicant will be given a deadline to return these documents. In the event documents are not returned by the deadline, Habitat Chicago will deny your application based on its incomplete status. For documentation that requires coverage of a specific time period, all documents for that time period must be submitted completely and with consecutive dates. You have a copy of the required documents list in your application packet, and you may also access this list on the Habitat Chicago website through a link in your post information session email. A version of this handout is shown on the screen now. There are two lists of items on this handout. The top one lists all of the documentation you and your co-applicant need to supply. This section only applies to you and your co-applicant if you have one. The second list, right below the first, lists the documentation you, your co-applicant, and any household members who are 18 and older need to supply. This section applies to everyone, including you and your household. Household members that are included here are only those who will live in your future home and are 18 or older at the time of application submission. Follow this checklist as you collect your documentation and double check to make sure you have all applicable items by your consultation date. Please note that after you complete your consultation, Habitat Chicago may request additional documentation in order to clarify any issues or circumstances revealed through the documentation that you submit at the consultation. As you are collecting your documentation, feel free to contact Habitat Chicago 
prior to your consultation if you have any questions regarding these documents. We will review each type of documentation in the following slides. Identification documents. You and your co-applicant, if applicable, must provide one document to verify residency. Please bring the original to your consultation. You may also bring a photocopy or we will make a photocopy for you before you leave. You only need to provide one of the following for each of you. A social security card, a permanent resident card form, I-551, along with supporting receipts from the issuing agency. The card must be valid for at least two years from the date of your application. A work visa, E1, E2, H1B, H2A, H2B, H3, LG, G series, 0 1 visas are all eligible and must be valid for at least three years from the date of your application submission. This requirement applies only to you and your co applicant. You do not need to supply these for other household members. Your co applicant and you and any member of your future household who is over the age of 18 or older must provide a photo identification. You may bring in photocopies for those not in attendance at the consultation meeting. Please provide either a valid state issued photo ID or a valid driver's license. Credit Inquiries Explanation If, in reviewing your free credit report accessed at www.annualcreditreport.com, you or your co-applicant has a hard inquiry within the last 90 days, you will need to fill out and submit our form titled Letter of Explanation for Credit Inquiries. This only applies to the applicant and co-applicant, and only if either has an inquiry on your credit report within the last 90 days. This does not apply to other household members. You may determine if you have any applicable inquiries by navigating to the inquiries section of your free credit report and looking for any inquiries within the last 90 days. Only those not marked as soft are applicable for this step. The letter of explanation for credit inquiries may be found in the links in your post information session follow up email and looks like the document showed on the screen. If both applicant and co-applicant have recent inquiries, fill out one letter for each of you. Fill in a numbered section for each inquiry. If you have more than four recent inquiries, fill in another copy of the letter. For each hard inquiry, identify the following. The date on which your credit was pulled, the creditor name, the reason why they pulled the inquiry, and whether or not an account was opened. An example of this is if you had recently applied for a car loan. The finance companies would have inquired about your credit from the credit bureaus, and this would now be listed under hard inquiries on your credit report. For our purposes, you would need to list out each finance company that inquired about your credit. If multiple companies pulled your credit report on the same date for the same purpose, list all of these companies on one line where it says credit name. Please note that after Habitat Chicago pulls your credit report in the application process, our inquiry will also appear on your report as a hard inquiry. If you cannot access a recent credit report because you've exceeded your limit for the year, we can do this step of the application process after the consultation once we have pulled your credit report. The only difference is the timeline for your loan application review. 
bank and asset statements. This requirement applies only to you and your co-applicant. You do not need to supply these for other household members. Habitat Chicago requires you to provide all of your bank statements and asset statements for the most recent two months. We use this information to verify savings and stability. Please note that the minimum required amount of savings to remain in good standing if you are selected into the program is $2,000. At the time of application, you must demonstrate the ability to maintain $2,000 in reserves and, over the course of your time in the program, save an additional $1,500 to achieve the final required closing costs goal of $3,500. Bank statements include any of the following that apply to you. Checking, savings, money market, or any other financial institution account. Within your accounts and through your banking statements, at least one applicant must be able to demonstrate a consistent minimum of $2,000. Asset statements include any of the following that apply to you. Certificate of deposits, pension funds, savings bonds, trading or stock accounts, 401k and other retirement accounts or any other asset building accounts. If necessary, assets may be used to meet the minimum savings requirements if the funds can be made available at the time of closing. If you plan to use these for your closing costs, you will need to provide documentation from the institution holding the account showing that you will be able to withdraw $3,500 from that account at or around the time you plan to close. Housing History. This requirement applies only to you and your co-applicant. You do not need to supply these for other household members. As a lender, Habitat Chicago will review your housing payment history by examining your rental history for the past 12 months. Acceptable documents for proving rental history are canceled checks, bank statements showing regular payment withdrawal to a landlord. These must show monies withdrawn in landlord's name. Official rental ledger for previous 12 months of payment history from the landlord or rent receipts or money order receipts with the landlord's name as recipient. Habitat Chicago may send your landlord or person you are renting from a verification of rent form in which we will require that the landlord verifies your payment history, amounts, and timeliness of payments for 12 months or request additional documentation from a subsidy agent to show that payments have been consistent and timely. If you live with friends and family or are currently homeless, provide documentation showing 12 months of payments to the friend or family member and or 12 months of consecutive rental payments within the past three years, depending on your specific situation. Additionally, provide a letter of explanation detailing your current situation as well as how you are engaging in financial actions and plans to be able to sustain and afford housing payments now and in the future. Marital status. This requirement applies only to you and your co-applicant. You do not need to supply these for other household members. If you are or were ever married, provide the following information based on which situation applies to you. If your spouse has passed away, provide a death decree. If you are divorced, provide a divorce decree. And if you are currently married, please provide a marriage license. Bankruptcy and foreclosure. 
This requirement applies to you and your co-applicant. You do not need to supply these for other household members. If you have gone through a bankruptcy or foreclosure in the past five years, we need to see documentation of the date these matters were resolved. If either applicant experienced Chapter 7 or 11 bankruptcy, submit discharge papers from court. If either applicant experienced Chapter 13 bankruptcy, submit dismissal papers from the court. If you experienced foreclosure, provide county records showing the date of the final foreclosure decision. Foreclosure records are available through the Cook County Recorder of Deeds website. In all cases, your application will maintain eligibility if the discharge, dismissal, or decision dates occurred at least three years before the date of your application submission. Wage-based income. This requirement applies to you, your co-applicant, and any member of your future household who is 18 or older. Habitat for Humanity Chicago uses your recent household and applicant pay stubs to get a snapshot of your household's current income and your ability to qualify for our program. Please be aware that we consider income that is likely to continue for at least three years in our evaluation of your ability to pay. Income that is temporary or not likely to continue after three years will not be factored into your household or applicant income totals. For anyone in your household, including you and your co-applicant, who is 18 years or older, Submit one of the following types of income documentation. Pay stubs from the most recent previous two-month period. Pay stubs must be consecutive and complete. A failure to submit pay stubs for the time period requested will result in an incomplete application. If you are missing any pay stubs, contact your HR representative at your place of employment to get copies. If your job does not provide pay stubs, submit a letter from your employer on their letterhead describing your pay frequency, amount, and average hours worked in the previous two months. All employment will be verified independently by Habitat Chicago and we will discuss in the following slides. Please note that depending on the pay period used by your employer, the number of pay stubs you and your household members are expected to bring in will vary. For example, if you are paid weekly, Habitat Chicago will want to, you to submit your eight most recent pay stubs. If you are paid bi-weekly, it is likely you will need to submit four to five recent pay stubs. The important thing to remember is that we are looking for income documentation for the two full months prior to the day you are submitting your application. So bring all pay stubs to cover that time period for all people over 18 who will be living in the home you are applying for. Non-wage income. This requirement applies to you, your co-applicant, and any member of your future household who is 18 or older. Habitat Chicago does not discriminate based on type of income. Remember that income includes regular continuous payments received by members of your household, like part-time employment, social security, or pension benefits, and lift, or other contract work. We evaluate applicants and household income and will require documentation of this income regardless of the source of income. If you or others in your household receive regular cash or financial benefits, payments, or assistance from a government agency or institution, a pension plan, or child support, or foster care or adoption stipends, you must provide official documentation from the source of those payments for a two-year period. 
This documentation needs to show consecutive payments. The kind of documentation that you can utilize to prove consistency and likelihood of continuance of payment may vary based on source of income. For many benefits or financial payments, you can obtain an award letter or recent statement or a summary statement of benefits by going to the institution that provides you with this income. W-2s. This requirement applies to you, your co-applicant, and any member of your future household who is 18 or older. Habitat Chicago uses your W-2s to verify your annual income and household income for the previous two years and to forecast the consistency of your income to qualify you for a 30-year loan. You, your co-applicant, and any member of your future household who is a wage earner and is 18 or older must submit the most recent two years of W-2s. The number of W-2s submitted must match the jobs on your tax returns and your application form. Your employer is required to send you your W-2 each year for tax purposes, and these forms are typically attached to the paper copy of your filed tax returns. You should have these items in your personal records. If you or your household members are not in possession of your W-2s for the past two years, check your copies of your tax returns or contact your tax preparer or Human Resources Department to obtain a copy. As with other required documentation, if you or your household members are wage earners, failing to submit this documentation will result in an incomplete application. Tax returns. This requirement applies to you, your co-applicant, and any member of your future household who is 18 or older. Habitat Chicago uses your filed tax returns as one source to verify your household's financial history over the past two years. This is one of the most important financial documents that you will need to provide for your application. Submit a full copy of filed and signed tax returns for each member of the household over the age of 18 who will live in your future household for the most recent two years. If you believe you are exempt from filing a tax return, provide Habitat Chicago with a written copy of the legal statute that details this exemption, a letter from the agency that provides financial assistance to you stating you are exempt, or a letter from an accountant or attorney detailing why you are exempt. Providing incomplete tax returns or unfiled tax returns will hinder our ability to process your application and can result in an incomplete application. A lack of documentation of your exemption from filing taxes, if that is your tax status, can also result in your application being rejected. Obtaining missing tax returns. If you don't have a paper copy of your tax returns, you must obtain them before your application submission consultation. We have listed three ways on this slide to obtain a copy. If you used a tax preparer, contact them and they may be able to provide you with additional copies. Or if you used an online tax preparation service, log into your account to access saved copies. Anyone can contact the IRS to retrieve copies of their filed taxes, either online or over the phone. You can also request the transcripts by mail, but this may take more time. Habitat Chicago cannot complete your application processing without a copy of your taxes. Self-employed income. This requirement applies to you, your applicant, 
your co-applicant, and any member of your future household who is 18 or older. Self-employment includes any business you own, as well as part-time contract work like Lyft, online stores, or doing hair in your basement. Again, Habitat Chicago uses your filed tax returns as one source to verify your household's financial history over the past two years. Your full year of tax returns show what your historical business profit and income is after subtracting expenses, hence giving a good account of your income from self-employment. If you are self-employed, provide the most recent two years of IRS Schedule C's with your filed taxes, as well as a current Schedule C profit and loss statement and or letter from an accountant or CPA showing the most recent three quarters earnings and losses for your business. Additionally, provide the last three months of documentation of your current business income, including debits for business expenses to determine your current income status. We reserve the right to review the most recent quarter's business bank account statements to get a full picture of the current income and losses from your self-employment. City of Chicago tickets. This requirement applies to you, your co-applicant, and any member of your future household who is 18 or older. As a part of our land use requirement for home building, we sometimes are obligated to ensure that the buyer is free from city debt. We ask that you supply a list of outstanding city tickets and any existing payment plans at the time of application for anyone in your household who is 18 or older. This gives us an idea of whether zero debt can be achieved by the end of the program. It is not an immediately disqualifying factor. To obtain your tickets and payment plans records, visit www.cityofchicago.org slash revenue and enter the information for each household member. Step 3. Signed Agreements and Disclosures There are several documents that you and your co-applicant will sign in the application process. We'll list them briefly in this section, but we'll review them in far more detail when meeting in person. Signed documents to bring to the consultation. This requir requirement applies only to you and your co-applicant with the exception of one document that does apply to all adult members of your household. Please review the documents listed on this slide carefully before signing. We will go over these documents during consultation. Please note that all household members over the age of 18 must sign the sex offender registry check policy. Please have them sign this before coming to consultation. Documents to review and sign at consultation. This requirement only applies to you and your co-applicant. This slide lists the other disclosures and agreements you and your co-applicant will sign at your consultation. Please note, the final release, the request for verification of employment for which you need to come prepared with the names, addresses, phone numbers, and relevant contact for your and your household's employers for the past two years. Thank you for taking time to watch this presentation. If you would like to move forward with your application for home ownership with Habitat Chicago, please follow these next steps. If you have not already done so, call Habitat Chicago to schedule a consultation. Your consultation will take approximately 90 minutes to complete. The deadline to complete a consultation is Saturday, November 23rd, but you must call by no later than 
November 22nd to make an appointment. Make sure to complete the application document and gather all of your, requirement docu your required documents prior to consultation. And finally, do not hesitate to call Sheila or Misha if you have any questions using the contact info on this slide. We look forward to seeing you at consultation.